Microphone check. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. The Coffee and Biscotti Show. I'm your host, Crew Mel Bellissimo. Today is Friday, June 24th, just past 12 o'clock Eastern Daylight Savings Time. And I hope that wherever you are in the world, you are doing awesome. Where to begin this week, my friends? Well, let's start, shall we? First of all, here in the nation's capital, the weather is shit. Thank God that today we got a little bit of sunshine because the rest of the week, um, I'm happy that it's over because it's been rainy and it's been ridiculously humid. And so here's the way it works. It's either cold in this town or it's super humid that you don't want to hang out outside. I don't know. I don't know. We got to fix this. We got to fix this somehow. We got to collectively fix the weather here in Ottawa. Uh, Last night, I had a wonderful experience. My dear friend Rob took me to see a basketball game. Uh, For the CEBL, the Canadian Elite Basketball League, we went to go see the Ottawa Blackjacks versus the Edmonton Stingers. Now, guys, you know I'm not a sports guy, but we had court, uh, 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 court seats. And wow, it feels like you're in the game, man. It was awesome i couldn't believe it but like then the players would come by on the way to the bench and give you props on the way to the bench it was incredible what a wonderful experience shout out to rob m because bro thanks so much it was a great evening of course we had our delicious italian pizza del piacere on preston here in little italy in ottawa awesome place thank you pietro i can't wait for you to get that new oven my friend it's going to be awesome Um, What else? What else can I share with you? I mean, it's been a a bit of an interesting week. I'm still recovering from my soccer injury from my foot. And I had an absolutely fabulous birthday. I want to really, really give some gratitude and, and really show my appreciation for everyone that came out to uh, Kiko Sushi on uh, again in Little Italy. Uh, You see a trend here happening, huh? Everything happens in Little Italy. Uh, we went to Kiko Sushi. Uh, thank you to Tuan for, for organizing an absolutely fabulous event. So here's the thing, guys. What I did was my wish was to have a birthday where people would come together. We would break bread together. And that how I could serve them would be to DJ and to have everybody just dance the night away and smile and it's exactly what happened and i couldn't be more grateful um, saturday night a uh, little bit of uh, casino action we went to try our luck to see if i had any birthday luck if julius caesar was here he went and went like this for the casino and then sunday night got together with again a couple of the boys and had got to give a shout out to the moon room on preston because man these guys are awesome. I think her name is Tracy, the owner. What a fabulous woman. She's done incredible things with this place. It's a bar, guys. If you look from it from outside, it really doesn't look like much. But in the back, they've put together this beautiful patio. And I'm just going to share with you something, guys. I can no longer eat grilled cheese. I'm afraid I can no longer eat grilled cheese because after the grilled cheese I had at the Moon Room, I can no longer, there's nothing that compares. It's like, I explained it as such, it's an orgasm for your mouth. That's what it is. It was fabulous. Make sure you look Tracy up at the moon room. It's awesome. Aside from that, I'm really excited today. I put in my post that my guest today immediately warmed my heart. She immediately warmed my heart because this is the first time in the Coffee and Biscotti Show history that I have a guest that not only grew up in the neighborhood that I did, but actually went to the same elementary school that I did, of course, uh, years later because I'm clearly much older with uh, whiter hair. 
but I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. I, I, I don't know, maybe we, we, we sort of cross paths somewhere. I'm sure we have, but this is, this is remarkable because 30 plus years later, I get a chance to interview a woman. Uh, by the way, gentlemen, she's beautiful, but she's taken. Sorry. Sorry, she's married. Uh, but she is, she's a stunning goddess who grew up in the neighborhood and went to elementary school, and 30 plus years later, I'm gonna interview here on the show. That, my friends, is pretty cool. So this young lady, I'll say it like this. Let me, let me, let me backtrack. It seems like the show has taken on a bit of a life of its own. Because what we've seen, even though I always say that this show is about passions and transformations, what's remarkable about it is that you see people who have gone into some sort of profession and something happened. Maybe it was, as Dr. Dyer calls, a quantum moment. Something happened in their life where they switched, they changed, they felt an emptiness, they felt some sort of void in their life, whatever it is. But they experienced something which drove them, which pushed them. Some might say that the soul was screaming at them to go and, and find and fulfill a different path. And today, my friends, this young lady did exactly that. 20 years, 20 plus years in the world of retail as a professional. I mean, I can't even imagine. Whew. Retail for 20 years, holy shit balls. I can't even imagine how many late nights and early mornings she had to go to stores and set up stores and manage people and, oh, can't even imagine. But today we're gonna to find out, was there a quantum moment? Was there something that changed? Because now she's just like this sponge, this sponge who's like absorbing all this information, certified in neuro-linguistic programming. I mean, like Reiki master, life and success coach, and the list goes on and on. I mean, it was it's really quite remarkable. And, and I, I gotta give this woman credit because we used to say back in the day that if you're not progressing, you're regressing. And this woman is doing exactly that. She is 100% head first, all in, as they say in poker. She is progressing at a rate that's, that's unbelievable. She's just thirsty for knowledge. And here's the beauty about it. As thirsty as she is for knowledge, it's not just for her to keep, you know, to keep hidden and close to her heart. She's taking this knowledge and the part that warmed my heart was is that she's using all of this information to help others, to unblock people from whatever they're experiencing, whether it's trauma, uh, you know, uh, uh, pent up emotions that have not been released. Uh, you know, there's, I mean, if there's millions of reasons, of course, but she's doing this because she wants people to align themselves with who they truly, who they truly are. And she wants to work at bringing people to a place where they find inner joy and inner peace. We used to say a long time ago that, or at least was taught in a class, that relationships, when we talk about loving relationships, that nowadays they fail for two reasons. Number one, because you go and find somebody that makes you happy. And of course, the moment they stop making you happy is the beginning of the demise of the relationship. And secondly, because most people think about what they can get out of the relationship versus what they can put in it. 
And, you know, this young lady has an incredible story. I can't wait to bring her on. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are in the world, get off of your comfortable seat and put your hands together for the very beautiful Laura Sanzo. <sighs> I was actually taping you. Were you? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if you saw me taping you. I was like, how can I not get this on video? Can we Yay. just do that? Can we just do that for an hour and a half? Talk about right? me. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Laura, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. This is, this is fun. I love live TV. This is great. I want to give a special love, though, Laura, to one of our dearest, uh, uh, dearest friends here on the show, uh, yes. Mr. Josh Leslie. He helps moderate the show, so at some point you'll meet him uh, or connect with him. He is a gem of a human being. Um, my standard line every show is, "Everybody needs a Josh Leslie in their life." So thank you, Josh, for being here as, as Hi, always. Hi, Josh. <laughs> but Laura, today, today is really uh, uh, all about you and, and, and getting the world to know who this amazing woman is. You know, we want to know, like, what's the story with this girl? Here's this girl that grew up in North York, <laughs> Ontario, Canada, you know, like, and it's just remarkable because, you know, most people who know North York know Yorkdale Shopping Mall and what a you know what a how it blew up of course over the last 15 or 20 years my god i remember i don't know if you remember laura with the little fountain in front of simpsons i used to, i used to work in yorkdale that was one of the malls i spent a lot of time i and to your point i remember because there was like um the simpsons and people used to go eat up there and then that's, I remember right. that's right at one point when they added that first exchange extension when they started to really make the mall really bougie i remember sitting down and this is how much time I spent in Yorkdale, but it's just because it was part of the neighborhood. So I remember sitting down at one point and being like, oh my God, my life is changing. Like everything is changing around me because it was like such an essential part of where we grew up. And it was yes. just kind of taking a life of its own. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> it was yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah, I believe it because I remember, I remember I saw a picture, I looked it up on, on, on Google uh, I think I put something like Yorkdale in the 1970s. Yeah. And all it showed was the little, you know, one of the pictures was the little fountain with Simpsons and the the, the, the restaurant that was on the top floor. Yeah. And I think for a lot of us that grew up in the area that, you know, our parents and our grandparents, like I know my grandparents, their house that is right across the street from Yorkdale, like my grandfather built it before I was born. So in the yeah. early 70s. And so for them, that was part of their their life as well. So it was just like not only a transition for myself, but I know like a turning point in their lives. But that's life. It's it's a circle of life, right? For sure. Constantly evolving. So, Laura, you know, I'm, I'm super grateful that you you came on the show today because, you know, I as I said, you warmed my heart. It's my heart. It's so cool to, to, to not know someone and almost feel like we've known each other for decades because we we have so much connection you know that's also a testament to you though it's just a testament to you. your energy and your vibration and the way that you speak to people and speak of people so that's definitely a testament to you as well thank you and you know i will say this i will say this laura that i'm, I'm excited to know about it when i was reading your bio and i was you know putting the post up today about about today's show i i i thought about it a lot and i said you know what was it? What was it about this girl? You know that she decided to have this profession, and 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 she was she was in it for for like you, you know when you're in that long, you're not just the the person that folds the clothes, and you know you're a professional in this industry. You know. Yeah, no, I was I was managed. I, I was high level management. I could have even gone further. Like even to this day, when I go into a store, I'm like the store's not run well, or I'm like the store <laughs> the store's run really well. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. So it's it's in my blood. Um, for sure, it's one for of those sure. things I think that stays in your blood. But but what I, was... I what I want to do, Laura, is I want to start at the beginning. Like I want to go. I want you to go oh, as yes. far back <laughs> as you can, as deep. How many brothers, sisters? Where did you grow up? Like like uh, were you born in North York? All of this stuff because I want you to paint a picture for all our friends that are watching live here on Twitch, and for those that are going to watch the recorded version afterwards. So. Take it away, Laura. This is all about you, girl. Don't, so don't forget I'm 43. This is a lot of years. <laughs> well, 
I'm still older than you. <laughs> I'm an old man. You can have it. Um, I can have it. <laughs> yes, I can. Um, well, yeah, I did. I did. I grew up by York. I grew up by York, essentially, off and on my entire life because my parents separated. I was about four or five when they divorced. My mom mm. got married super young, but back then it was, I was born in 79, so late 70s. And then it was like, if you wanted to date somebody, you had to get married. Like, if you wanted to be seen with somebody in person, you had to be married. So my parents got married super young. She never got married, of course. Um, so my parents divorced when I was around four or five. And then, you know, my mom has her story and I was <laughs> part of that story and kind of, you know, went through the trenches with her on something. So my grandparents lived across the street from Yerto. So a lot of the time while my mom was, you know, in her chapters of her story, yeah. I still stayed at my grandparents um, for, for many years, even when my mom had left at some points in my life. So I think that's where my independence comes from and my, and my strength because my mom was always very present in my life and, you know, I, I was able to always tell her everything. Um, but I always felt like I wanted to stand alone. I don't know if that makes sense. Hi, Jenny. Um, that I wanted to stand alone. So my mom has been married three times, her last marriage. She's currently married for like 25 years. Um, so I think for me, I never really saw that ideal family unit, right? Mm. Um, which is fine. You know, nowadays, every family looks different. And I think that really is the beauty of the society that we live in. So I went to St. Charles, like yourself, um, for for elementary school. And, you know, we grew up in the 80s. So we had, we had the life, you know, like bike riding with our friends. Yeah. Our parents didn't have to worry. Now it's like, you know, you can't even leave your kids in your backyard sometimes, right? So to me, it, there was no social media. So to me, we, we lived the life in the 80s. The kids that grew up in the 80s really were able to live. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's what I did. We had a group, great group of friends and such. Hi, Sandra. How are you? Oh, hi, Sandra. <laughs> um, so sorry. Am I okay to chat? As of course. Like absolutely. Natural instinct. absolutely. Of course. Of course. She's so, our connection, of course. I know. And again, she once again, Sandra. Sandra Mio strikes again. <laughs> I love that girl. I know. She's beautiful. And so I grew up like a normal child. Um, love it when you guess, like, like look at the look chat. The oh, chat. sorry. <laughs> it would probably take me a little longer to get through my story. But anyways, <laughs> had an, a normal childhood, you know, typical childhood, even though my parents were not together, which is fine. And then, you know, like everybody else in the status quo, what do we do? I know we had this conversation before, Mel. What do you do? You go to elementary school, you go to high school. high school. Back then it was five years, so you had lots of time to, you know. Where did you go, Laura? Did you go to Loretto Abbey? I went to the Abbey I, in grade 10, 11, 12, 13, because by that time my mom was with her um, second husband and we had moved to Brampton and Loretto Abbey wouldn't allow me in because of, you know, the borders and all that nonsense oh, distance, back then, yeah. right? So I started in, in uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. I think it was the first year it was built. It was a beautiful, huge school in Brampton. But for me, that was a huge learning experiment almost because you know, we grew up by Yorkdale, everything was integrated, everybody was, you know, integrated. And then when I started that school in Brampton, it was like, you know, the Italians were together and the Portuguese were together and the Spanish people were together. It was not how it was. So I was like, what's happening here? Why aren't people just not together? Right? So that was like a huge eye opener yeah. for me, because for me, I just thought that everyone just integrated. Yeah. Um, but my, my heart was still back in Yorkdale. Like I would even before I drove, I would take the um, you know, the bus to Yorkdale, the gold bus to Yorkdale and, and spend the weekends at my grandparents at Yorkdale. So that, 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 that is my area. That is my heart. Even That's though the I was hood, in, baby. That's yeah. Hood. Even though I was in Brampton, I was like, you know, a girl in high school, would like take the gold bus every weekend to Yorkdale. My grandparents were right across the street. So, and, and you know, so, and I, I'm lucky. I'm so, I'm so blessed that my mom had me young, even though that marriage wasn't successful for her because not only did I have the most incredible relationship, unfortunately, they're no longer with us with my grandparents. But when I got separated, I went back there and my kids, both my kids, um, because they're 14 and 11, they spent like the first few years with their with their great grandparents. Right. So they have the most incredible memories to bring with them. So, it, you know, it, it was really such a blessing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
So where am I? So I went to, yeah, I went to Laura Abbey for 10, 11, 12, 13. Post-secondary, there was, a, it's funny, Sandra could allude to this because I brought my mom to a retreat that we just had, a women's retreat. And my mom told the ladies how when I was young, she always used to hear me like talking to people, like I was a teacher. But I, I never wanted to, I know I never wanted to be a teacher. It's nothing that ever really came up for me. But she remembers me as a young, younger, as a young girl, just talking to a group of people. Mm. Um, but it's funny that didn't come through for me when I was like deciding what I wanted to do in school. So I was like one of those girls. I was like, oh, this looks interesting. I'll take travel and tourism, even though I don't even love to travel. <laughs> I try. I like to. I like to travel a little bit more back then, but not so much now. But I took travel and tourism again. Amazing experience. Met great people. I went to Humber North. Um, then. I started working in, in retail. And back then, retail, honestly, that was like 1999. Retail was the place to be. It was thriving. You know, it was nothing like how any industry really is right now. But, you know, there was overtime and there was potential and growth. So I started working. And to me, I was just doing what everybody else was doing, going to school. Okay, where did you work? Where did you work? Because I got to know. Oh, my God. This. Yeah. Did, I did you like urban behavior or something? <laughs> No, Costa Blanca. Hello. Oh, <laughs> Costa Blanca. <laughs> Silly me. <laughs> That's why when people are like, don't you love Spanish? I'm like, no, not quite, because I've listened to Spanish. But, it, but I started um, at Sick Kids, the hospital for sick kids. Uh, they have, I don't know if it's still there. One of my clients works there. She said there's a modified version, but it was like a beautiful Mickey Mouse store. They had licensed Disney items and then yes. a roof section. So I was like... 18, 19. So I, I used to love it because all my friends, I had a friend that worked the, from your, the, from the hood. <laughs> I had one friend that worked, <laughs> one friend that worked at Yoga and Fruits and I had friends that worked at Timmy. So it was just like, it was, and we were young. So we weren't even absorbing the fact of where we were. You know what I mean? Like we were around, unfortunately, a lot of sick kids, but at that age, you don't, it doesn't really phase you. So we were just yeah. going to work, right? And then from there, I got a job with Winners. So everyone knows Winners. And, of course. Right? I was with Winners for a long period of time. That's where I met um, my then and now husband. And then from there, I went to Costa Blanca. <laughs> it's funny you that up, you said RBB upgrade, behavior. Upgraded, right? Or upgraded. <laughs> oh, sorry. It was actually an upgrade because I got my own stores. And that's something I never really wanted with Winners. Um, so yeah, and you know, like I said, that's what everybody was doing, right? And then it just wasn't enough for me because I was like, you know, I just started to surround myself with different people that started talking about different things. And I was like, no, like, you know, as much as it was great because you're serving people in, in many different elements. And I was able to see a lot of people grow and go through succession, but there's still, there was still a lot missing for me. And so then that would have been 2005 when I went to Costa Blanca. And then 2012, then I got married. I met somebody, got married, you know, of course, the natural progression in mm -hmm, the life of, of somebody living the status quo life, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I thought I met like, you know, well, he's incredible, but the most incredible person. And then we were just doing our thing you know, planning to have a baby. And, you know, when you're planning a wedding, you're kind of in this own, your own, your own little world of, mm. you know, fantasy. And then about not even a year into the marriage, I realized that everything wasn't as <laughs> Disney as I thought it was. As fairy um, tale as you thought it was going to be? As fairy tale as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah, fair um, enough. I had already had my daughter who was about six, seven months yeah. old. I was still working when I had my kids, I was still in retail, but not on the full-time basis as I was before. And then, you know, even though it was not a fairy tale, I, I stayed because, you know, that's, that's what we do. We stay, especially when there's kids involved, we, we stay because we just, we stay, right? Well, there's a family and you don't want to, you think about your kids and you think about how your kids are going to think about it. I'm sure I'm curious as to whether or not the fact that your parents divorced at an early age that that played a role in, in your me, decision in me making, staying you know, in me and you staying yeah um i don't know to be to be completely honest with you i didn't have the mindset to even be able to parallel those things at that point hmm. i just my head wasn't expanded like that do you know what i mean to even yeah. reflect on that to be completely yeah. honest i had to me i didn't know anything about personal development 
that you know what I mean not even that there was an entire industry about it I just like I said I was just living life um until I could live the way I was living any longer then I knew I needed to change something um so I want to get into full details but there was a, an addiction that came to surface um which anybody that has dealt with addictions before is obviously a beast on its own um mm -hmm. so you know you hear people say they made a decision you know so some people like how did you lose like 100 pounds i made the decision or how did you do this how did you do this i just i decided and that's exactly what it was for me something just flipped i was like no i'm done this i'm not this is not going to be my reality anymore physically i was fine um but i was flatlining I know that word could be a little dramatic, but I was literally flatlining in every sense of the word, emotionally, spiritually, um, and physically, even though I didn't have a diagnosis of any kind, um, I was just barely making it through the day. And I had, you know, children to take care of. I had, um, I had my daughter who was um, funny enough that you mentioned that my, my age from when my kids, from when my parents, sorry, separated around the same age, about four. And I had my son who had just been flagged for autism at his one year checkup. Um, and you know, when the doctor flagged him, I wasn't, are you sure? You know, I wasn't in denial at all. I was just like, I guess this is really with any diagnosis of any kind, but I was like, okay, what do I need to do? Just tell me what I need to do and I'll do it. So I was great through the separation, selling our house. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm autistic. Mm. Jenny has a great show on Twitch too, by the way, Laura. Oh, amazing. I'll yeah. have to tune into that. You yeah. know, my, my son is 11 now and he knows of his diagnosis and we watch a lot of shows with people on the spectrum and they are, really are the most beautiful, amazing, incredibly gifted people that we have on this planet with incredible brains. So yeah. it's, it's the diagnosis, being part of that community for now a decade has taught me so much like beyond. Uh, and you know, the, the, and I know Sandra could probably resonate with this as well. Um, you really start to take the little things not for granted, you know, like something as simple. I know we're getting a little sidetracked. So I apologize for that, but yesterday, no, like please. Son, I like this. My son went in like, you know, engaged conversation or play with other kids. And, you know, you're thinking, okay, he's in grade five, like, hello, that should be a no brainer. But it was like, Oh my God, this is like huge. You yeah. know what I mean? So you being around people, um, with disabilities, if you choose to use that word or um, vulnerability or what have you, it really allows you to take appreciation for things that every people take for granted. You know what I mean? Of so course. going going back to um, the story. So I just decided one day I'm like, I'm leaving. And okay, but like, but I want to I want to skip yeah. this straight. So Laura, you were working in the retail industry. You had you got married. You had a you had one child. Yeah. Then years later, you had a second child. And when that child was one, yeah, is when you separated? Yeah, so I was I was still in retail, but very part time. Mm. Um, because I had I had my son with me. Like I didn't take him to like preschool or anything or anything like that. So I was home with him predominantly, right? Um, so yeah, we separated. Um, that would have been about 2012. And then my grandfather at the time said, you know, you're not going by yourself with two kids. You're just going to come back here. And of course, you know, it's temporary, but time and years go by so fast. So that's what I end up doing. I end up taking my two kids, emptying the house, putting stuff into storage. I contacted a real estate agent that we both did know. So it was very unbiased. We put our house for sale. He really didn't have a choice. I, you know, I didn't really leave him a choice. I said, I'm leaving. We're going to put the house for sale. Um, because to be completely honest, because of the addiction, we needed the money. Um, so I'm somebody that in terms of my financial blueprint had to <laughs> redo my entire financial blueprint and learn how to love money again. Cause money for us was like the core of a lot of our problems and a mm. lot of resentment. Um, so I, I literally, not only did I need to learn how to love myself again and learn how to love life and such, but I needed to learn how to love money again, which, you know, doesn't seem important, but it is so important, right? It's huge. It's huge right? because yeah. we were taught at a young age, Laura, that you know, there's that there's this quote in the Bible. Of course, they don't tell you the whole quote, but what they what the the part that they took was money is the root of all evil. Yeah. And growing up in my grandparents' house, unfortunately my grandfather had addiction as well. 
that was very money driven. So I, I remember, you know, watching um, my mom and her siblings, like, you know, beg him to stop and beg him to just stay home. So I already, wow. ha I saw that learned behavior and, you know, now being trained as I am now and just knowing more, I can retrospect, see how I repeated the patterns of my mom and my grandmother. Wow. Interesting. Because we both, we both attracted the, to a T the exact same men. Not that, not that was a bad thing. My grandfather, my dad's, you know, a great man. My grandfather was an exceptional man. Um, but in terms of, you know, habits and, and character and such, we attracted three generations attracted the exact same men. So that's why when I'm working with people, um, even young girl, like even girls in their twenties, right. I'm like, you have the potential to break generations of programming. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I Ancestral have a daughter. energy. Yes. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. So I have, remember I told you the story Mel, that I was home one day when people were looking at our house before we sold it. And they asked the real estate agent if I was selling, cause I was sick. They thought I was physically sick, like dying. Cause that's how like lifeless I was. Like I didn't look sick per se, but my eyes, like I had no life le left in me. Um, so that's when I was like, I'm making the right decision and what to come is to come. So I, I was still moderately in retail, but I started having, um, I started an online business, like a health and wellness business in network marketing. I'm no longer in network marketing, but that's where I was at that point. And what I have the company, um, Arbon. What did they sell? Um, health and wellness products, nutrition, skincare. And I have to say, like, I'm, I'm no longer in that industry, but if it wasn't for that industry, I don't even know where I would be just yeah. for from the people that you, and this is really entrepreneurship. It doesn't have to be necessary network marketing, um, but just being around entrepreneurs, I, I started to understand, and my mom gave me a copy. I should have mentioned of the secret, right? Which is, which is, was a turning point for me. Um, it wasn't even the secret itself, but just the notion that I could make my life change. Cause up to that point, I was like, why is this always happening? To the, why does this continually happen to me? It was just pure victim mentality. Right. I was like, okay, so like, I don't deserve this. Like I'm a good person. How can you know what I mean? Like I should be happily married right now and, you know, living in a house that I, and so it was all up to the point. I was like constantly, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? Mm. So that notion that I could change the direction of my life by my thoughts, literally changed my life um even though i didn't really understand it I, it was like hope for me you know what i mean it yeah, was just like hope. it hope. was like a, a sense of like light at the end of the tunnel i was like okay maybe i could change the direction of everything so just you know being around people that talk different um really changed my life essentially and then I, lo I love I love Laura that you you sort of you used the book the secret as as sort of a a turning point because for me I'll tell you and Josh I don't know if you can find it brother but on YouTube there is a channel called Spirit Science mm. and Laura this I saw this movie this clip that was 59 minutes and seven seconds long. I remember it to the T. 59 minutes, seven seconds long. It was called The Hidden Human History Movie. And I just remember watching it and going, holy shit. Yeah. Man, there's a lot of shit that I don't know. Well, this is it. And so when we were separated and he would take the kids on the weekends that were his, that, that's what I would literally do. I would just like just absorb, you know, and like, and, and, and the secret is very, if you, if you think in the realm of spirituality and science, the secret is very, you know, entry level, entry level. Exactly. So I would just like absorb as more and more than I could absorb. And then it was, it was never really enough. Um, so from my time in network marketing, what I loved most of about it, um, and even in terms of the retail was just watching people have breakthroughs and you know it didn't have to be anything like tony robbins you know capacity of breakthroughs but just shifting you know in different ways and just you know what they would feel when they would even have a little shift right and 
so that's where that natural transition really happened for me. People ask like, how did you go from one place to another? And it was, it was just very organic, um, that I started coaching and again, it, it was, it wasn't enough just being able to just have access to people one-on-one. I love one-on-one coaching. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to learn more about, you said science and, you know, the subconscious mind and, thoughts and emotions and vibration and frequency and everything. Um, so, you know, I think COVID for a lot of people were a bless was a blessing in some ways. I know for me, it was, um, this actually happened before COVID. I don't know who's going to watch that's, you know, a little bit more spiritual than, but for me, this was more of an obsession than anything. But in 2019, I had a panic attack. So, I had gotten back together with with my ex-husband. We were living together yet. Again, that happened very organically. <laughs> um, okay, wait, 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 wait. So you're yeah. telling me that you you broke up when? In 2012? 2012, yeah. And then you went like seven years. Yeah. I went And now seven, you guys yeah. are together again. Yeah, I went seven years and I had other relationships. And um, I enjoyed my 30s in, in every sense of the word. I... 30s is 30s is such a credible decade for women. I can't even begin to say this. I can't talk for men, of course, but for women, 30s is such a beautiful decade to just really you get this sense of confidence and belonging that I, I don't think you can experience until that decade. Um, so 30s for me, I learned how to love myself. I learned how to be on my own. You know, even when I didn't have my kids, I, you know, I wasn't always doing something with other people. I, I really three years to the 30s and I believe it yeah you're gonna love your 30s Jenny but I was spending time alone learning more and more right and I just I yeah to be honest with with you leaving him was the best decision I ever made for everybody involved I, mm -hmm. I don't know if my kids understand it right now at where they are in their lives and but one day they will so yeah and then very organically, we just started spending time together. Um, now we're living together again. Is it easy? No, <laughs> right? Because you know, when you spend that period of time on your own, um, especially I have a very strong personality, you know, there's still it's every day, right? <laughs> every day work. Um, but it in 20, and then I had started coaching, and then 2019. I had a panic attack. So I don't know if anybody that's going to listen to this or is listening to this now ha has ever had a panic attack, but it's really a surreal experience. And I have to say before my panic attack, I started having a lot of things um, re um, manifest in my physical body. So I had like three months where I would just have like tension headaches. And then I had, this is where Reiki really came into my life. And then I would have like sensations of like a lump in my throat. And it was just like I had, I, you know, again, this is very energy based. So um, I feel like I felt like I had stagnant energy, like just pinned up everywhere in my body. And what happens when when that happens, it has nothing else to do but to manifest into physical symptoms, right? So correct. With Reiki, I just felt like I was always going for Reiki to like, you know, release tension or energy in all different places on my life, in my body. Sorry. And then it was January 2019, right before COVID, because I I remember I went to the hospital that night, and Toronto had its very first COVID patient that had just come from China. So it was literally right at the beginning of COVID where they thought it was more of something that was coming in from other countries, right? So in this panic attack, I literally, I had never had one before. I literally felt like my head exploded. I thought I was dying because I had just so much pain in my head. I thought I was having an aneurysm or something, but literally it was like my crown opened up and I could just feel like all this energy coming out. It was a surreal, surreal experience. Um, so long story short, I went to the hospital. Um, obviously, you know, there wasn't anything they could really diagnose me with except for dehydration. So I just had some IV. And then for the next like two, three weeks, I felt like I was just unaligned. Like I felt like my body was going in one direction and my mind was going into another. So even though I spent like the last decade working with, um, the mind body connection and oneness and, you know, I was teaching and training people that both in my coaching business and my network marketing business, I was like, I'm, I'm like a fraud, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm mentoring people how to have alignment. And I feel like I'm like everywhere, but yeah. in wholeness. Right. So I was like, okay, so 
I was in so much appreciation and gratitude for it because I was like, okay, this is telling me that I need to be doing something different, like going deeper, essentially, right? Um, so that's where I started with my certifications, and I started learning about the subconscious mind and um, you know the fact that our body is a servant of our mind, and just became obsessed almost with the notion of energy um, and how we are energetic beings and we attract you know on a fre- frequency or vibration. And then that's really where I am now. Um, like just to your point, to circle back what you said in my intro, which was so beautiful. Thank you. I, I you know, I'm right now doing more certifications because I really want to get familiar with our with our nervous system and be able to mentor people through healing through their nervous system. And I had mentioned Reiki really came into my life, and my Reiki master, who was a guest here um, prior, said, "Why don't you just do so level one I'm healing?" Yeah, men's own. Yeah, she said, just do level one because I w- I literally felt I was healing something like every single month, right? And I have so much appreciation for it because I really got to know our energy centers um, on a whole different level. And again, I really felt it was like an ascension process because my intuition now is like you know on on the next level. Um, it was painful. It was painful. So that's when people are going through growth. And, and even sometimes on a physical level, it's painful. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's, you know, that's what you need. That's the work that you need to do. That's the work that really, I used to think personal development was reading books and don't get me wrong. Reading books is, you know, so important and so vital and what you can take from different books that you read, but that's not really the real work. You know what I mean? That's like a little bit, that's like the easier work, but the real work is really you know, releasing the toxins and releasing the unresolved emotions and transforming the limiting, limiting beliefs. And it's, it's not always easy work at all. It, it gets painful at, at every of the planes, including um, physically. I'm just going to read this comment from Jenny. Is that okay? Of course, of course. I've been wanting to try Reiki for a long time. I am still not in the financial position to afford it. It sounds like it could be helpful. I'm hopeful I can afford it soon. One thing I'll, I'll say with Reiki, um, more so than I think any other modality that is offered to people or any, like in terms of a complimentary um, modality, you'll know when it, the right time for Reiki is. People ask me like, when do I come back or when do I get Reiki? Reiki is one of those things you need to be called to. Like you'll, Jenny, you'll know when it's the right time for Reiki. When And when it's that time, everything else would just not be relevant. It'll just, it'll just happen for you. Hmm. Well, I think that I think that there's a lot. There's, I mean, there's so much to take from this. But I, you know, I, I, the the advice, the, the, at least what I what I hear from all of this, Laura, is, is that the separation from your husband represented a very difficult time in your life. And. Hi, Tanya, we were just talking about you. We were just talking about you, Tanya. <laughs> I was giving you shout outs. Um, but, you, you know, you went through this difficult time, Laura. And what's interesting is, I mean, it's certainly in alignment with, with, with some, of the, some of the beliefs that we have that in order for us to actually make some changes, we have to go through something traumatic. It'd be nice if we could just evolve without going through the trauma, but but I kind of feel like, well, if we didn't go through tr- the trauma, then we wouldn't know that we need it. Yeah, definitely. And that's why in terms of my business, what have you, that and my my podcast, why I changed the name of my podcast, but previously, previously it was the Born to Rise Society because the word rise really resonates with me because, you know, at every given, any given moment, any given day, I'm going to just, you know, I'm sorry, this is a little gender bias. I'm going to speak to the women that are going to listen. Um, Cause I think even, especially today, it shows that women, we have a lot of work to do um, more so than ever, but at any day, any given time, any hour, any minute, you can start to create your rise story. Right. Cause you know, one thing that I learned from Tony Robbins, well, I learned a lot of things from um, Tony Robbins, but one of the key things I learned from him is pain. You can either, you know, let it defeat you, or you could turn it into into power. Um, so that was such a, an amazing thing that I learned from him. And and any given day, women could turn anything that's happened to them. And everybody has a story. Every everybody has a story. 
Not yeah. one story is any, you know, less or more um, important than the other person's story. But regardless of what your story is, you can either, you have two decisions. You can either allow your story to hold you hostage for the rest of your life. And, you know, uh, that's going to be a lot of women's decision to make. Or you can just say, well, that was my story. And today I am creating my new story. Yeah. Um, Power, powerful words, Laura, powerful words, because I think that I, you know, I have family members that, uh, that, you know, I, as far as I'm concerned, uh, never really dealt with their emotions. And they didn't say to themselves, look, I'm, that's my story. But my story doesn't define who I am. 100%. And, you know, I think like, like how Jenny's had talked about the Reiki, I think this is something else people need to be ready for. You know what I mean? So like, even when I'm speaking to somebody and you know, we've had this conversation a lot about metaphysical, you know, this, um, but you know, even when I'm speaking to somebody in terms of like how something could be showing up in their body, and it could be uh, related to an emotion that they need to work through, not everybody is ready for that. Right. And, you know, I think we need to appreciate that piece of it. But that being said, yes, 100%. Tanya said, that sounds true for, that sounds true for women and men, 100%. Pain is a tremendous agent for healing, awakening, and change. Mm. Um, sorry, I was just processing these. Okay, sorry. Now I know my thought. That being said, you know, I just said this to a client recently, like, it's so empowering. Like, when I started to learn about law of attraction and the universal laws, and now I consider myself, you know, a hybrid of spirituality and science, because um, I think there's a need for both of them. Mm. It's so it's so empowering to know that you are at a cause for your life. You know what I mean? You could show up every day and really make the most of what life has to offer. You know what I mean? Like it, it's so empowering to know that you could do certain things and that can really determine the quality of life that you live. Um, and I think more and more, especially I, I think um, COVID was an agent for this. I know we had this conversation before. It really allowed people to expand and open up their eyes. And I think when we were all given that opportunity to just stand still for you know, a few minutes initially in the beginning, people were like, oh, maybe I don't need to be living like this. Maybe I don't need to be living with chronic stress and inflammation and, and what it's what it's doing to me and such. So, you know, there's there's a lot of happening. There's energetically, I think there's a lot of awakening, if you will, happening. But I still think there's so much, so much work to do. And that's why um, you're the best hybrid. Love that way of describing the science spiritual approach. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> You're the best. That's very good. Very good for you to acknowledge all the chat. Um, you know, Laura, but what I will say is is that I, I think that I think that what I've what I've experienced in, in, in my journey, um and, and I'll say this, I, I I have no problem saying this publicly. I I gave an analogy, and of course, being a martial artist for uh you know twenty five years, I there was a there's a point where uh, um, or at least the analogy was i want you to imagine laura that you're in the ring and that you're fighting in the ring and there's another girl who knocks you down in the first round yeah well because it's in the first round you if you can stand up again you can you know shake the cobwebs off and still continue to fight with some vigor because it's early on in the fight yeah i think the where i'm where i'm challenged now is being knocked down in the fifth round of a five round Muay Thai fight mm -hmm. close to the end of the fight where, yeah, you can still pick yourself up, but as you move forward, you're moving forward a little slower. Oh, 100%. And I'll, I, also, I say this very, very openly and very vulnerably on my show because that's where I'm at now. I'm moving forward, but I'm just moving forward a lot slower than I was before. I think I've pushed. I think I've, I've, I've maybe tried to force or, or try to like be so dedicated. And I did all this work, and and Laura, this is an interesting point because I think that a lot of us get caught up like this. We 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 almost feel like there has to be something going on every day of your life because if it's not, it almost feels like you're you're a bum. 
You're not doing anything. What's the matter with you? I catch myself saying, saying, what's the matter with you? Why aren't you? Do- Why is there not 17 things to do? And, and, the, and I, go ahead, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. No, I was gonna say, and that's why I think, especially in the last couple of years, where the whole mu- hustle mentality has totally taken up, has fallen, really, right? Um, and that's where you know you hear a lot of people talking about the balancing of masculine and feminine energy, and it's not it's not gender based, right? Um, But just to go back to what you were saying, I think that's where compassion comes into play, you know, compassion for yourself. Um, I think that's where trust comes into play and and surrendering and just... Wow, I'm glad you used the word. (laughs) Letting go of, you know, some of the control. And I'm a woman, right, obviously. Um, But I can imagine for men, it's probably a little harder to, to surrender because society expects you to not surrender. Of course, of course, you're absolutely right. I mean, we be in control. We were taught as men that you don't surrender. As a matter of fact, you don't even think about surrendering. But here's the thing, Laura. I think I've got a different definition of what surrendering really is. You know, I think many people think of surrendering as you know someone taking the white flag. I don't have a white flag, but there's a black flag, (laughs) and I'm you know just going like this, and I surrender. No, that's not the kind of surrendering that we're talking about. The kind of surrender that we're talking about is one that I would describe, and and my dear friend Don Lachance. If you ever get a chance to to connect with him, Don Lachance is an amazing human being. Um, He's a grief and loss counselor. And he he has an incredible life story. But I, I think that what he says is that the first part of that word surrendering has to be accepting. Mm-hmm. The acceptance that this is what is now. Yeah. But not to accept it like, oh yeah, I can accept. No, I mean he he talks about to like from a from from deep within to accept the situation and to be okay with surrendering. And to be okay with the fact that this is what's happening now. And I'm okay and I welcome it because I know that in time, things will change. In time, there may be something. And if I surrender, but I keep myself open to the possibilities of what could be, that this is how we uh, this is how we're going to progress, evolve, and maybe align ourselves with our true self, our higher self. And that, and that, that right there describes me. It was Halloween night, so it was October thirty first. So it would have been, I think, like twenty twelve, what have you. That fully describes who I was when I left my uh, marital house that evening. I remember it was Halloween. It was raining. I took my two kids. We had already emptied the house, and. I sur- I probably surrendered, I think, when I made the decision, but especially that night because I was like literally two kids in tow. I was taking um, them to my mom's just to, to take my daughter trick-or-treating, and then I was going to my grandparents. But I literally in that moment surrendered. I accepted what happened. Um, I accepted what was happening, and I had full trust that I would just be carried easily and effortlessly to the next place to where I was to be in my life. And that, that word trust is, you know, it, it's such a powerful, beautiful word. And I know it's hard to do on this human experience that we're on, but to just, you know, just release, release the need to know what's coming next and having enough trust that whatever it is, is what's meant to be, especially like in terms of redirection. I know for a lot of people, redire- redirection, just like, you know, it's so scary for people. Um, I love redirection because I know that's just the universe picking me up from where I am, where I'm not supposed to be, and just putting me exactly where I am supposed to be, right? Yeah, it takes a, it takes a great deal of trust, and it takes a great deal of hope. Um, you know, aside from the mental tenacity to be able to, you know, accept and and you know feel everything, because Jen- Jennifer wrote feelings. And, and she talks about that a lot on her show. So it takes a lot to be able to accept these feelings that you're having, mm-hmm. but the ability and the strength to as quickly as we we feel them to quickly let them go. And that's and that's where, you know, practices come into play, like being still, being in the moment, mm. right? Because 
you know, most of us are just in this robotic state where we're just like going from one task to another, one conversation to another, another one social media platform, one app to another. And then we're like, what just happened, right? Yeah. But if we can actually be in the moment um, and process what's happening, you know, okay, so what am I feeling right now? I don't, I don't, I don't know if your audience would be familiar with Esther Hicks, who, you know, is really, to me, Abraham OG. Hicks. Abraham Hicks, right? So Esther Hicks ch channels from Abraham. So that to me is like the OG law of attraction, right? People have to be ready for it, but she talks about the emotional guidance scale, right? So basically vibration. So, you know, on the top are higher vibrational emotions like gratitude and love and joy, and then lower vibrational resentment, guilt, anger, fear, and all, and all that bag of lower vibrational. Is it feasible that on this human experience, we can always be here. Of course not. It's just, it's unrealistic, right? But that's where the awareness comes into play. Asking yourself, okay, what am I feeling right now? What can I do to maybe shift this? Maybe it's, you know, I'm feeling a little anxious. Okay, maybe I know that that's telling me I need to be a little bit more present because if I'm feeling anxious, I'm worrying about the future or I'm worried, you know, I'm thinking about the, the future or I'm worried about the past. But if I'm present, then I won't feel anxious. Maybe I'm feeling sad. Okay, what can I do to, you know, reframe this a bit? Maybe I can dance. For a lot of people, dancing high, you know, increase high in their vibration. Maybe it's of course. Yep. working out, going for a walk. It doesn't really matter, but it's just slowly moving yourself higher up, back up the emotional guidance scale. Um, one thing that Abraham Esther talks about a lot, which I love, is rampage of appreciation. You know, I, I did this, I don't know if Sandra's still on the line, but we did this at our ladies retreat a couple of weekends ago, but just, you know, gra I think gratitude puts a lot of pressure on people because gratitude is like becomes part of a practice and it's like almost robotic. Okay. What am I grateful for today? You know what I mean? And it's always, you know, I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my family. You know, I'm, you know, it's kind of a very robotic practice where appreciation helps you stay in that frequency of gratitude hmm. and appreciation. Right. So like right now I, I'm in my bedroom, like not very, or my office bedroom, whatever not like fancy, nothing much happening, but, um, oh yeah, Sandra's still here, but what can I be appreciative right now in this moment? I could be appreciative of you. Like you're incredible. Like just to be in conversation and in your energy is just like, you know, it, it's incredible. I am appreciative. Like everybody that is joining us live. I'm appreciative of Wi-Fi because <laughs> if I didn't have Wi-Fi, I wouldn't be on this call with you today. Of so course. just, just appreciating is just, it's a little bit less robotic and a little bit in the present and just, you could do it anywhere. And when you're in line at the grocery store, okay, so it sucks. I'm in line or I'm in traffic. Okay. So what can I be appreciative? Oh, I'm so appreciative. And then all of you too, Sandra, um, in traffic, you know, who <laughs> traffic on the 401. <laughs> I know you're in Ottawa now, but do you remember traffic on the 401? What can yeah, you that's finally... part of the reason why I moved. <laughs> exactly. So, like, what can you finally, what can you find to be appreciative when you're stuck in traffic on the 401? I'm appreciative of my car that allows me to get from A to B. I'm appreciative for this highway that allows me to get to the West End so I can see my parents. I, I you know what I mean? So, that's where just being present. I want to bring a point to that. I, I yeah. think that I think that I really appreciate that. I appreciate the distinction between gratitude and appreciation, and how gratitude can be robotic. That's a, it's the first time that somebody said that to me. That gratitude can be a bit of a robotic uh, uh, um, process. I think, I think honestly, I think morning routines and evening routines more so morning routines have become very robotic because they've become very marketed you know there's like and don't get me wrong i love robin sharma and i love like all these incredible um lights that we have but you know the 5 a.m club and miracle mornings and so to me mornings morning routines have become very marketed um because it's inc like yeah, i teach and train my clients to have a morning routine and evening routine they're so important but what happens with the rest of your day <laughs> You know what I mean? Like you're doing your morning routine at 6 a.m. You're doing your evening routine um, at 8 p.m., what have you. And what happens for all the hours in between your morning and evening routines? <laughs> are you are you not appreciated? Are you not giving gratitude? Are you not in the moment? Are you not 
do we personal development? Are you not listening to things that serve you? So it's, I think it's just as important. I think it gets really left behind to. So let's, let me ask you yeah. something, Laura, about that, because that's really interesting because I have a morning routine that mm -hmm. I give to my clients and, yeah. and mine's based on, on, on this concept of body, mind, and spirit. 100%. What I, what I believe in, 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 in my experience of, of going to metaphysical school, in my experience of, of having the life experiences I've had, uh, if we subscribe to the philosophy that we're a three-part being, that we're a body, we're a mind, and a spirit, yeah. then part of my philosophy with this says, well, what needs to happen if we're going to have a balanced internal control system, as Dr. Uh, uh, William Glasser would say, um, we have to exercise all of these three points. Yeah. So there must be an element of exercising the body, the mind, and the spirit. So what I do huh. is on my website, you go on decorouslife.com, you scroll down, there's a, a morning routine section, you put your name and your email, and, the, and there's an email that shoots out automatically to you. Yeah. What's interesting is, is that I would like to know, what are you telling your clients with regards to the rest of the day? Is there practices that you get them to do throughout hmm. the day? 100%. So morning routines are so essential, especially when you're talking about energy. And I believe that we can manipulate our energy or energy to really become a vibration of whatever we want. Like that, that's my belief, right? And that's through our thoughts, that's through our emotions, that's through the language you use, and, and a lot of intention and a lot of awareness and a lot of being present. So that and that starts from the morning, 100%. I love a practice called mental rehearsing. Um, you know that I'm a huge um, student. I'm not gonna use the word fan, but huge. He is a mentor to me, Dr. Joe Dispenza. I love his work. Um, so he talks about mental rehearsal, really, right? Which is just preparing your body ahead of this experience. So whatever you have planned for that day, um, just start to run it through your mind like it's a movie right and keep running it through your mind so your body starts to basically react to it biochemically and start to believe that it's happening mm. making you a vibrational match so i tell my clients no matter what you do in the morning even if you wake up late before you leave your bed you're meant to rehearsing what you're doing that day right because you're just shifting your energy you're just changing your whole vibration but to answer your question in terms of the entire day yes. um the number one thing I tell people to do, and I think when people think about meditation and mindfulness, it, it's it's looming for a lot of people because I think people think it needs to be like this, like grand scale, you know, they need to have an altar, they need to have a place to meditate and they need to have a pill and all the crystal. And, you know, I think it just is overwhelming for a lot of people. So what I teach and train my clients to do is be, be still between each task. So like, you know, as you're transitioning from task to task. So whether it's like, so for example, from this call, um, when we end this, I'm going to probably work out before I go pick up my son, right? So I'm not going to just go from this call, right to, to change to work out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just take a few minutes, um, you know, just close my eyes, sit in silence. I'm going to just reflect and process what happened, give gratitude and appreciation for it, because how incredible is this, right? To just, you know, giving giving women a voice. Okay, I'm going to repeat that again, because I think it's important, especially today. Um, so I'm going to just process what happened, appreciate all, all over it. If it was something that maybe I could have done differently, I'll, you know, reflect on that. I won't wait till the end of the night. What where could I showed up maybe a little differently? What did you know, where can I have maybe been my higher self a little bit more? Um, and then I'm going to set intention for the next task. So that's going to be my workout. My intention is I'm going to, you know. So brilliant, Laura. I'm gonna, so brilliant. Wow. I'm probably going to do some Zumba. I don't know. I have just calling. I never do Zumba, but I'm like, I feel like doing Zumba. Something came up on YouTube. I'm like, this looks so fun. I want to try this. Um, and that's what I teach. it. And it doesn't have to be like 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes, even just two minutes. Just close your eyes and be like. And I think this is especially important for people that, you know, many people are working from home, right? Permanently now whether it's a hybrid or not. And I think it's so important because I find people now at home are working even more and working even harder. And, of course. you know, and you take when we're talking about energy, you're taking an energy everywhere. You know what I mean? So even when you're in a zoom, you're taking in a lot of energy. So just being able to just make an attention to release 
some energy to be able to take on new energy in the next next task. So, you know, I think just like these little increments of not so much breaks, but just moments of stillness in between tasks um, is so important, especially now the weather's nice, you know, to just go outside, get grounded for a few minutes before, you know, your next Zoom meeting starts. But it, But that's like intention is legitimately like I think the greatest gift we have because most people are just living with no intention, no awareness. Right. But and the more you do practices like this, I could guarantee you and anybody that's listening to this, the more you become attentive when things come up that are not serving you, the more present you are when a thought comes up that like a worthiness thought, maybe I'm not worthy to be having to be speaking right now to your community. Because, you know, I'm present enough, I'll be able to hear that and be like, okay, that's not the truth. I'm going to speak my new truth. My new truth is my voice matters. It's awesome. I really am really quite taken by it, Tanya, because again, my history is that I spent tens of thousands of dollars on, on courses. Uh, in not to take world. it's they're important. Morning routines are important. <laughs> No, but I, but I really love this this idea of you know, and it's so it seems so simple, but but it's just the discipline to be able to pause between one task and the other and just take a few few moments. It's really great. Well, it's even emotions, right? Like, don't you know? And this is pretty, I think, like entry level energy, right? So when you're feeling good, good things happen to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you want a simple lesson on vibration there you go feel good right not yeah. that we can always feel good every given moment of our time but that's where you know yeah that intention comes into play but you know we have enough awareness as human beings to know that when we're feeling good think opportunities come to us you know connections come to us um unexpected abundance comes to us and then when we're not feeling good you know, either way, you're going to gain momentum. That's just that's just reality. If you're feeling good and good things are happening for you, it's like it just seems to just come in full momentum. And then um, the other way around. You know, we talked about money. Well, let's bring up money again. You know, when you're talking about debt and scarcity and lack, and that's going to gain momentum too. Mm. You're going to start attracting people that are talking about the same things, or you're going to attract um, bills or what have you. So. You know, I, I, I don't know if I believe in stagnation as much as I do that we're always in momentum. It's just either are we going the right way or the wrong way? There's a great book by um, called The Slight Edge um, that says, you know, every single day we're either moving towards our goals or away from our goals. There's, you know, there's we're in movement. Yeah. Energetically, we're in movement. Yeah. And Esther Hicks says that's the beauty about going to bed and waking up is because if you're going through a difficult time you, and you go to bed that night, that vibrational frequency has stopped and you get a chance to rebuild it again or change it in the morning. Her, 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 for anybody I think that wants to learn more about vibration, frequency, spirituality, um, you know, YouTube has amazing like five minute videos of her teachings um, that are really incredible and that will 100% change your life and mm. you know that intention comes into play with energy so you know when you're about to like for example i'll use this this is an example again like you know before i came on i set the intention what kind of energy do i want to bring because people are now feeding off my energy so that that's you know i need to be intentional with my energy to be mm -hmm. able to serve others um of course. and that could be so results driven you know going into something anticipating the results that you want because what most of us are what thinking about what we don't want we're thinking about exactly. what we don't want we're feeling low vibrational emotions speaking yep. garbage to ourselves um and then we're wondering why and that was that was me like hello <laughs> that that was me back in aurora um you know the deaths were just piling up the relationships were worsening it that was me and so I was like, it wasn't just like that, but in the sense of like, okay, maybe I can change this. 
Um, yeah, so, and everybody has that power. Everybody has the power. They just need to be, I think, ready and they need to be open. My question, my question, Laura, is that th th this is fascinating stuff, but I, what I want to know, and at least what I'd like for you to share with, with, with the audience is, so after all this experience, uh, you know, um, retail, direct marketing or MLM marketing, you found this, you know, you were given the book, The Secret, and all of a sudden, this passion for wanting to learn and absorb and 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 sort of the road down personal development if you will mm -hmm. um you know was very strong with you so what's happening what are you doing now tell us a little bit about the projects tell us a mm -hmm. little bit about your company tell us a little bit about what you're doing now and how you're serving yeah for sure and just a little side notes one 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 right now um but sorry <laughs> that's right for anybody that leans into that um right now i predominantly work with private full-time clients um that is really what i love right now doing you know i have a tool bag of modalities i i have a program that i work them through but i really like to customize based on their desire outcomes where they are in their journey because everybody comes into this you know some people have already had coaching. Some people are really aware of energy and some people are just starting out in terms mm -hmm. of personal development and energy and such. So I really customize based on what their needs are. But that really is where my focus is right now. And that is where my love is. It's just very intimate, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, will I change that? I'm not sure. Right now, that's, that's where I'm feeling aligned to. Um, I also have an in-person practice for anybody that is local on Weston Road. Predominantly, I do Reiki in person. I could do other modalities, but um, the other modalities could easily be done virtually as well. Not that I'm not promoting doing things in person, because I think that human energy in person mm. is, is so important that everybody should really start to lean into. Um, I have a podcast called The Laura Sanso Podcast. We're on a, on a break right now in between seasons. So we will start our, our third season in the fall. And I am doing two women's retreats for anybody, again, that it's local, one in September, one in October in Kearney, Muskoka, which are incredible. Um, so you can look out for those dates. I also have, talking about money, a workshop that I'm feeling called to do on money, but I'll have more communication with that. I'm, I'm, um, I'm a manifester, like my human design type and my energy type is a manifester. So... Manifestors, I don't know if you're familiar with, with human design. I'm, I'm not an expert in human design. I just think it's super fascinating. Manifestors, we do what we intuitively feel to do. So as things feel right to me, um, I do it. Like I had a, a mentorship that was like a monthly group program. It didn't feel right. So I disabled it. So you know what I mean? So as things feel right, if if you ever hear me talking about something or doing something, it's because intuitively it feels right to me. And it's not because I think it's going to be a financial gain or anything like that. It's because I intu intuitively feel called to it. So what can they expect when a, when a client, I mean, you call it coaching, but you know, you're coaching while using some of these modalities that you've picked up and learned along the way. So yeah. give me an example of what a, what a session would look like. Oh my goodness, every session is, is really different. If somebody wants, I get like, you know, people that specifically want to do hypnosis or specifically. Um, You're a hypnotherapist? Yeah. So, and I have people that reach out, I want to do one thing. And I'm like, mm, honestly, I, I don't think that's the best thing for you. So, you know, I'm, I'm really honest with people. I want, you know, my my biggest thing is for people to have shifts like right away. Um, so it, it you know, what I'm being called to is what I'll do with them. But in terms of like my full time private clients, honestly, every session is different. And it really is depending on what's going on in their life. So I'll give you an example. So one of my clients is going on a work trip, that's a, like a really important work trip next week. Um, so our focus this week was setting intentions for that trip. Our focus that this week was getting her in the energy of the version of her that she wants to show up as at that work trip. Um, so who is she showing up at that work trip as? She needs to start embodying that version of herself now. So that's that's what kind of work I like to do with clients. Like, um, you know, the first thing I always do with clients is release, rip, 
So we talked about the unresolved emotions, the limiting beliefs, um, the trauma. That's the first thing I do with them because when you start to release, you start to make room for new, mm, of right? So that's, that's the first thing. And then the next thing I do with them is get crystal clear on who they are becoming because my job is to get them into that energy then, that moment, right? Um, because I want them to start showing up as that version of them. I want them to, so if they're that version for them, for example, is a six figure income earner. I want them to start making decisions as a six figure income earner. I want them to start walking into rooms like a six figure income earner. I want them to start shopping like a six figure income earner. Um, I want their consciousness and their programming and their beliefs to be a six, six figure income earner. Um, and then in terms of modalities, whatever I feel I need to use is what I use. So I'll use yeah. hypnosis, um, NLP. So what, something that I love is called um, timeline techniques, which is like time therapy. So we just um, subconscious work, right? So it's just going on their timelines of memories to, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it's, sometimes it's child, most times it's childhood. Sometimes it's, it's um, at birth, sometimes it's past life, you know, if that is somebody's belief system, mm -hmm. generational, societal. Um, this timeline thing, do you, yeah. th this particular modality, because there is one that exists that's Hawaiian and it's called Hopono Opono, which talks yeah. about timeline. Yeah, so this is like a, a subcategory of NLP. Um, and it's just literally going back. So let's say, um, for example, for women, I find for a lot of women, it's um, worthiness and um, the need for validation, right? So let's just say, for example, it comes up for them because it, it's subconscious work. So it's like, you know, same with hypnosis. We quiet, we quiet or calm the critical part of our brain that is always thinking and speak right to the subconscious, right? So for a lot of people, they don't even know what's going to come up. For them right um so let's just say it's an incident that happened with um a friend right so our goal is to get the learnings from that incident they could that they can now reframe that limiting belief with now um and currently i'm working on becoming um certified in energetic energetic wiring and encoding which is more som somatic and like nervous system because i you know our nervous system is the core of everything right so of course yeah i want to really become familiar um with that and then after that i plan to do my masters in all my modalities what about hypnosis uh, laura like mm -hmm. who comes to you for hypnosis and and what sort of what sort of release are they getting are they trying to receive from hypnosis yeah well no that's a great question hypnosis you could do like past life regression um so you know kind of unlocking the thing with memories, your subconscious mind knows when memories are safe to come up, right? So if something isn't coming up, it's probably because you're not ready to process it. So the subconscious mind is almost protecting you, right? But you can use hypnosis for like, you know, regression, something that may have happened early on in childhood and that kind of thing. And again, you're just quieting the critical part of your brain and allowing us to, you know, really speak to the subconscious mind, whatever is locked in there. What I love to do with hypnosis is get crystal clear on somebody's desired outcome. So let's say, for example, confidence. Um, somebody's, you know, goal is to be a confident person. So again, what do we do? We get crystal clear on what does that look like? And it's not, it's not fluff. You know, when I'm my most confident self, I'm gonna be doing, you know, I'm gonna be doing more lives. You know what I mean? That's fine. But we're going to get so specific on behavior, so specific. So when your most confident self, when she wakes up, what is she doing? What is she doing the next hour? What is she doing after that? What is she doing after that? Who, you know, like so, so, so specific. And then what we do in a hypnosis ses session is, again, we calm the critical part of the brain. And then we, we embed those suggestions right into the subconscious part of the brain. Hmm. Um, again, you know, the same Very kind cool of idea. Stuff. Very cool. Same ideology in terms of, you know, your body's a servant of the mind. So it's absorbing everything that your mind is telling it. Right. So the more you listen to these hypnosis, you know, your body's reacting to it again, um, becoming a vibrational match to whatever it is. And you can use it for everything. You know, there's different elements of of hypnosis. So, you know, if I'm not comfortable with something, I'll be totally honest with with somebody. Um, sometimes we need referrals from 
a licensed doctor or therapist if they're working with a licensed therapy a therapist so you know there, there's always a gray area because it is yeah. subconscious work right like trauma anytime you're working with trauma you want to you know act with integrity of course um but it, it's super powerful because you know going back to something we were talking about gratitude being robotic i think affirmations have become really robotic you know vision boards you know there needs to be substance to these practices. You can't just say an affirmation a hundred times and think that it's going to come to fruition. Agreed. You but need- I like, so vision boards is part of my thing, but I, I really have a very different approach to vision boards. You need to feel it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. You, you need to feel it. Like you need to legitimately, yeah. and that's the power of things like hypnosis. Um, it's just really low ne- leaning into the feeling. So when you have that six figure business, what are you going to be feeling? You know, what are you going to be saying to yourself? What are you going to be saying to others? What are you going to be seeing? What are you going to be hearing? What are you going to be feeling? And the key, and that's why I love mental rehearsal, is getting into that energy every single day. Now, and, for, for, for hypnosis and stuff, do you have mm-hmm. to be in person, Laura, to, to do it? No, I. No, I rarely do hypnosis in person. The only, I have, um, the only thing, in terms of what I, my preference is for person is Reiki, but even that you could do distance, but you know, there's obviously a different element when you're in person with somebody for Reiki. Um, but no, 100% virtually. Well, I have like clients in, te- in the States in Texas, downtown Toronto, like what New Brunswick. It's very rare that I, I have a coaching client that's not virtual. So 100% you could do all of this stuff virtually with the same impact. Hmm. Awesome. And and is there a website that uh, that uh, that you uh, that send people to? Yeah, of course. It's uh, www.laurasansel.com. Super easy. <laughs> okay. Perfect. My name. Yeah, I mean, I, I it, it, there's so much to unpack, but I think that the the takeaway for me um, was really about pausing in between each task. I really like that. I really like that that practice. And that's like talking about energy. Like that's where your intention comes into play for energy too. So like. Yeah. You know, again, I'll use this example because it's just in my forefront right now. You know, somebody that wants to become a six-figure income earner, that's their goal, right? So in that moment, are you in the energy of that version of you? Because if you're thinking lack, then you're not, right? If you're speaking certain things to yourself, then you're not. Um, And it's just a matter of just reframing it. What can I be thinking that's going to serve me? And, you know... It's, 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 it's a lot of attention. It's a lot of awareness. It's, it's not easy work, but it's so, so worth it. And, and again, that momentum, like it it gets easier. And then once you get into the momentum, there's like no stopping you. Hmm. I tell you, I would love to, I would love to experience a hypnosis session with you. That's for sure. No problem. I would would love that. I mean, so much. I, I think that again, you know, Laura, the the idea behind the show was to share people's stories of passions and transformations, and you clearly have made a, a, a quite a pivot, quite a transition from being this, you know, retail professional, then going into you know the multi level marketing uh, um, uh, realm, and then you know experiencing what you did. Uh, or what happened with you as far as, you know, separation goes, and then really opening yourselves up, opening yourself up to learn and to absorb this information because you were ready to do it. And I'm just getting started. Yeah, it's really great. And I think that the, the, you know, even the part of the story that's quite fascinating for me is, is, is that you're back with your husband (laughs) that's really great like i i i I have to say like um i i don't hear a lot of those kinds of stories i've heard it before but not a lot that somebody you know they they go on they separate and then years later they come back together it's not not disney (laughs) it's still not disney yeah i think we should just take the entire concept of disney like out of reality but (laughs) yeah yeah well hey listen 
I think that I think that that's another another part, another world where there's a lot of people that are about robotic things when it comes to loving relationships and some yeah. of the things that they should do to to go and get it. The, the the work is 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 internal. The work has to be done. I said I said it in my introduction that most people go into a relationship because they the other person that they met makes them happy. The the yeah. challenge is is that if you're already happy and they they make you happy, um, you know all they're doing is complimenting your happiness. We use a different word. We always yeah. used to say there was a, there was a young lady that was in class with us who said happiness is the ghetto joy, because <laughs> happiness is a state of mind and joyfulness is a state of being. It's true. I love that. And and I I loved it too because she just said you know. And, and she gave this wonderful, a wonderful example of how, you know, you could wake up in the morning, you could get a little love from your partner, and you're feeling good, you put on your power suit, you're feeling great. And then all of a sudden, you hop in your nice car, and you drive down the road, and you get a speeding ticket. And yeah, then and as then soon as start... you get the speeding ticket, you go to work and your boss rips you a new one. And all of a sudden, that happiness from the lovemaking you did in the morning and the power yeah. suit just fades. Because you've got you've gotten into a momentum, but of a downturn <laughs> spiral. <Correct. laughs> right. So so the idea of joyfulness or be living in joy means that it doesn't matter what's happening outside of here, but internally we feel we feel joyful. Uh, yeah. One of one of my favorite little books that was presented to be by my choice theory teacher and mentor, Mr. Francesco Bazzocchi. He said that he gave me the book, The Little Prince. And if you've never read The Little Prince, folks out there in the Twitchyverse, yeah. make sure you read. These are three books I wrote down so, so yeah, far. Yeah, The Little Prince. The Little Prince is a, is a kid's book. Mm. It's a kid's book, but he did a, he did a, a sort of a, a section in his, in his, uh, in his class uh, about the book. And one of my favorite quotes is something to the effect of anything that is essential is invisible to the eyes. I love that. That's right. Le Petit Prince, Le Petit Prince. originally. Actually, thank you, Mr. Leslie. That's exactly what it is. Um, so I, I, I really appreciate I really appreciate you, uh, Laura, taking the time. I, I can't believe it's 90 minutes. Like it's 1.30 already. Uh, I know. It, it goes so fast. Um, but I'm super grateful. And, and thank you for coming to share your energy with me and with all those watching. Um, thank you so wonderful what an absolutely wonderful time thank you so much i'm so humbled by the experience it was so much so much fun we have yeah, to you're, it you're again. great you're great <laughs> you're so great well i hope one day i'll be on the laura sanzo podcast yes you are you can check out the crew on the laura sanzo podcast you, you are, like actually listening to your intro i was like because i'm being present and being intentional with my thoughts i'm like i need to really step up my game <laughs> Right? All when right, I, cool. When I'm introing see? guests for my for my third season, because I have to say I'm a little robotic um when I do this. So I'm like, I'm gonna I'm gonna you're so welcome. I am gonna really step up my game. The step up the intro game. Well, we I think Josh coined it the blush tro. That while you're backstage or in the green room, my job is to try <laughs> to get you to blush so that when you come on your throat, your che your cheeks are rosy and, and you're feeling a little blush. I was putting it on my stories. I'm like, I gotta got to document this somewhere just in case somebody doesn't say this to me for the next uh, few That's years. Right. There you go. There you go. Well, thank you, Laura. Thank you for being here. Thank, thank, you, thank you so much, much for, for your energy, for your love. Um, you really, really warmed my heart. It was so great. Uh, it was so great to connect with you. You too. Thank you so much. I'm going to put you in the back room, give my final thoughts. Then, of course, we will raid to another channel so that means that anybody that's watching us now if you stick around my dear friend my dear brother josh leslie will choose a channel that we can redirect the people to they call it a raid and it'll be some sort of really cool either musician so or fun. music. it's awesome amazing Hi, happy edwin. friday edwin happy friday there's like a whole different world happening on here eh? wow it's so cool <laughs> Laura, you need to be on Twitch because it rocks. I know. I love this. Thanks so much, Laura. Bye. Thank you. And there you have it, folks. Another episode in the books. The Coffee and Biscotti Show. I mean, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that conversation. 
I love the 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 idea of the the, the hope that she instilled in, in 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 anybody who's watching. You know, yes, we have to sometimes go through something traumatic before we're able to sort of make a choice. See, this is all about behavior. This is why I love the metaphysics and I love choice theory because Dr. Glasser says that all we do from the moment that we're born to the moment that we die is behave. And in, 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 the, in the chart in choice theory, we talk about choices that are going to be make you in less effective control or in more effective control. And of course, what, what Laura talked about today was, you know, A, having hope, B, working towards things that will, will raise your vibration, raise your frequency, and, and most importantly, um, get you to, to a point of, of, of really starting to understand that present moment and feel that present moment and being intentional with your behavior. That's what I really love about it. And, and I, really love, um, I really love the idea of taking some time in between each task and uh, pausing. So if you're doing one thing, you're moving to the next thing, don't just move to the next thing. Pause, take a couple of minutes, you know, take off your socks and go step on the grass and get grounded. You know, a lot of people have this practice of, you know, connecting with Mother Earth. So such great stuff. So excited. Um, next week, guys, we are taking a break uh, as we will celebrate uh, Canada's birthday here. Um, so there will be no show next Friday, but we will be back uh, July the 8th. And interesting enough, my friends, my first relative, Mr. Michael Bellissimo, will be my guest on the Coffee and Biscotti show July the 8th. So make sure you look out for it. It's going to be an awesome show. He's got quite a story. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to having my cuz on the show. Putin Nation, we are going to visit DJ Dayquidney. Day knee. You got to help me out, bro. I know I screwed that up badly. With some funky house, new disco, and classics. Uh, in the spirit of rounding out at Clarity Coach Mel's birthday. Yes, indeed. Dockany. Day Dockany, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Cool. Well, my friends, that's where we are going to go. So, uh, from all of us here at the Coffee and Biscotti Show, thank you all for watching. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, of course, to our beloved Josh Leslie for always being here. Special shout out, of course, to Sandra Mio for the connection uh, again with a wonderful guest, Mr. Edwin 100X. It's always a pleasure to have you, sir. Um, and uh, Tanya from Soul Tribe Healing, thank you for popping in. Um, so great. Jennifer, I don't know if you're still here, but thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the show. And wherever you are in the world, have yourselves an awesome Friday. And as I always say, an even awesomer weekend, my friends. Um, that's it. This is Crew signing off. Another episode in the books, baby. My friends, we will see you in two weeks' time. Uh, Friday, July the 8th. Be here, my friends, 12 o'clock Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Don't miss it. Mikey Bellissimo on, on, on deck July 8th. Looking forward to seeing you then. Much love. Josh, rain us away, baby. Crew Mel saying peace out. I'm out of here.